July 25, 1873, Lewiston Evening Journal, Lewiston, Maine. B. Matters. The following article was written in reply to inquiries that had been addressed personally to the writer. Substitute for pollen. The best substitute for pollen that we have yet tried is rye flour. It should be ground very fine and not bolted. To feed it advantageously, take a board a foot and a half wide by three feet long and nail to its sides thin strips about four inches in width. This will make a shallow box of three inches in depth. Now pour in the flour to the depth of an inch and set it in some place near the apiary out of the wind. Rye flour fed in this manner induces early breeding and consequently early swarming. It should, however, be fed early in the season before the bees can get supplies from natural sources. Distance apart for hives. As bees are ordinarily kept, they should be set at least 20 feet apart. Especially where natural swarming is allowed, the hives should be set as far apart as they can conveniently. When hives are crowded close together, there is great danger that the queens will be lost when returning from their wedding flight. Number of queens in a swarm. In ordinary cases, but one queen issues with a first swarm, and that is the old one. Second and third, or after swarms, often contain several queens. When unfavorable weather delays the issue of after swarms for several days, they are almost sure to contain several queens. I have known as many as 12 queens issuing with a single swarm. Weak Colonies There are many reasons why swarms of bees are weak and feeble, and consequently unprofitable to their owner. There are thousands of hives that contain too much drone comb for profit. This is especially true of box hives. Another and common cause of feeble swarms is small and unprolific queens. Where bees are kept in small numbers and in isolated situations, the queens are apt to meet with drones from the same hive, which results in in and in breeding. Colonies that are weak in spring, if they have a good queen, and plenty of good worker comb can be built up by a regular and judicious system of feeding. If they are immovable comb hives, a frame of comb may be occasionally exchanged with one taken from a strong stock containing brood that is nearly mature. To all apiarians who do not find their bees a source of profit, I would urgently recommend the Italian bee. Procure a pure queen from some reliable dealer and rear all queens from this one, paying no attention to what drones they meet. In this way, you will have colonies which will be prolific in both bees and honey, provided they receive proper care and attention. Bees deserting their hives. Many beekeepers complain of bees deserting their hives. Often, when bees are hived in swarming time, they will stay but a short time and take French leave for the woods. A common cause for this is that the hives are left exposed to the direct rays of the hot sun. If the hive be new and clean and is kept cool, but few swarms need be lost in this way. Those who adopt artificial swarming have no trouble with their bees leaving, as an artificial swarm properly made never leaves its hive. Transferring Bees the best time for transferring swarms from box to movable comb hives is, in our opinion, when the apple tree is in blossom. It is also a good time three weeks after swarming, as the combs contain but very little brood at that time. Select the middle of a fine, clear day in which to perform the operations and, removing the hive to be transferred, Setting an empty hive or box in its place for the returning bees to cluster in, blow a little smoke in at the entrance of the hive and turn it over, bottom side upwards. Now, place a box without any bottom on the hive and, if there be any crevices where bees can escape, tie a cotton sheet around them where they come together. Now, with a couple of light sticks, wrap on the hive and the bees will begin to ascend into the box. 
when the bees have nearly all ascended, which will be in about 20 minutes from the time the drumming was commenced. Untie the sheet and remove the box, setting it on a board so that the bees cannot get out. Now, take the old hive to some convenient place, a clean barn or shop floor being as good as any. With a chisel and hammer, pry off one side and, with a long, thin-bladed knife, cut out the combs one by one. Have a smooth board, a little larger than your comb, and lay a couple thicknesses of flannel cloth upon it. Then, as you cut out each comb, brush off the adhering bees and lay it upon the cloth. Now place your frame upon the comb and mark the size of the inside of the frame. Cut the combs a trifle larger so that it will fit snugly within the frame. To hold the combs in place, we use a mixture of melted rosin and beef tallow applied to the edges of the combs. All combs containing brood should be placed together in the center of the hive. Reject all drone comb. When all the frames are full, carry the hive and place it upon the old stand, being careful not to dislodge any of the combs. Now bring the box containing the bees and shake them down in front of the hive and, if the entrance be large as it should be, they will readily enter. In transferring, care must be used not to expose any honey where the bees will find it or robbing will generally be the consequence unless the flowers are yielding an abundance of honey. Prevention of Swarming we have not as yet found any method whereby swarming may be absolutely prevented if the bees are kept strong in numbers. Remove the old queen and give the colony a young one of the present year's raising, and if the bees have plenty of surplus room, easily accessible, but few swarms will issue. If artificial swarms are to be made, it should be done early. As soon as the bees are strong in numbers, or just before they would issue naturally. October 6, 1910, The Stansted Journal, Rock Island, Stansted Province, Quebec. Bees and Beekeeping. In bee swarming time, spray the colony lightly with cold water before hiving. I practice several waves of hiving swarms, but will describe only one here, writes an expert. If the swarm has clustered on the outer edge of some tree where it necessitates only the cutting of a thin branch, I prefer this plan, provided, of course, they are within reach of my ladder. I have found it to be an excellent plan and consequently have practiced it for many years to spray a swarm lightly with cold water before hiving. Water seems to be very refreshing and soothing to the bees during the heat of the excited swarming fever and will often cause the bees to remain hanging until evening when it is more convenient to hive them. By taking pruning shears and clipping off the branch gently, they may be carried to the hive. When they are shaken in front of it, they will readily crawl into it and assume possession. Newly hived swarms should be shaded for a few days and the hive entrance enlarged to supply sufficient ventilation the section boxes should be transferred from the parent hive to the one containing the newly hived swarm, which now has almost all of the field bees. The parent hive, being so depleted, will have no further use for sections for a month or more. After the prime swarm's issues, put it on the old stand, setting the other colony close beside it. In five to seven days, remove the mother colony to a new location, and the field bees will desert it and join the swarm. The depletion and the fact that no honey is coming in discourage any idea of further swarming. The prevention of swarming in the production of extracted honey is not a very difficult matter, as the putting on of upper stories not only keeps down swarming, but secures the crop all in one operation. It all hinges on the one essential, large hives. Of course, I keep the entrance wide open during the warm season, and if the bees still show signs of being crowded by hanging out during the heat of the day, I raise up the back end of the cover, and this gives such a draft through the hive that they will usually go in. Do not let your bees hang out during the honey season, 
After the season closes, they will usually cluster on the outside of the hive in large quantities, if the weather still keeps warm. But as the swarming season closes, with the honey season, there will be no swarming. Plenty of comb space must at all times be available for the bees to store their honey. This condition is secured with a 10-frame upper story filled with combs of the Langstroth size. How to prevent swarming. There are several conditions upon which the issuing of swarms hinge. The first and most important factor is a present honey flow. Another is a multitude of bees. Excessive heat and a crowded hive are also incentives to induce swarming and will hasten the exodus. Now, in order to retard or discourage swarming, we must meet these conditions. The method that I have been practicing is to furnish each colony of bees an extra hive of empty combs. That is, at the approach of swarming time, or a week or two after the section boxes have been placed on top of the hive proper, I slip an extra hive body of empty combs under each hive and close the upper entrance, compelling the bees to take possession of the extra set of combs. This gives a double brood nest for the queen to supply with eggs. This has proved with me to be only a partial success. About one half of the colony swarm notwithstanding, but nevertheless the plan is a good one, my average yield exceeding that by any previously tried method. I might say that the colonies which had no thought of swarming stored the most surplus honey, one colony reaching 180 pounds. But with regard to those which did swarm, the swarms were necessarily extra large ones on account of the double brood nest and, of course, issued a few weeks later but gave excellent results. The second swarm. When a prime swarm issues, if the colony is strong and circumstances are favorable, a second swarm may be expected a week or 10 days after. If the queen cannot accompany the swarm, the bees will continue the attempt to swarm, sometimes every day, sometimes not so often. But when a young queen emerges, then the old one is disposed of. Profit from a hive. One year with another, a man or woman, there are a great many lady beekeepers now in this country, ought to realize from $7 to $15 each from a hive of bees and perhaps double the number of hives. This is a conservative estimate. Bees by Express. Bees can be expressed in the latest up-to-date standard Langstroth hives. Never buy patent hives with irregular fixtures. Many photographs showed that the crop of gooseberries, currants, apples, and pears is much more dependent on the bees than on the weather, except so far as the weather prevents the bees from working. 